Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome for our briefing here on March the 3rd. Uh, we're also joined uh, by Kelly Colopy, who's our Health and Human Services Director. She is um, at another location, but she'll be uh, piping into the, to the briefing, and we're going to discuss today our COVID-19 uh, kind of case rates and how that's going in the right direction, and then a lot more on vaccinations, a lot of great news, which we'll start. Uh, before I get to all that, I want to, again, just thank uh, Governor Gavin Newsom. He was actually in Long Beach uh, again today. He was just here. Probably folks just remember uh, visiting our downtown convention center site. Uh, and he was here today uh, talking with folks that are working at our sites over at Cal State Long Beach. And so um, at Cal State Long Beach, we actually have two vaccine sites. One is run by the university and the other is operated by Kaiser. Uh, that's also a state partnership. And so uh, the governor came down, uh, he toured and met with uh, the, the head of Kaiser. Uh, he met with a lot of the staff there. Uh, and of course, I um, got a chance to talk to folks that were being vaccinated today, um, as did some of us that were there with him. Um, and again, uh, he had nothing but great things to say about the city, um, about our team, and the way we are vaccinating uh, folks uh, quickly and um, as, as expeditiously as possible. Wanted to note, um, and one of the things that we noted today at the university uh, was that um, Cal State Long Beach, uh, we started vaccinating teachers uh, and staff, faculty there about a month ago. And uh, they have received now, uh, just within these last couple of days, enough doses to finish vaccinating all of their campus faculty and staff. Uh, the same is true for Long Beach City College, um, and the same is true for Long Beach Unified School District. We think that within um, this next week uh, or so, uh, we'll have our entire public education system completely vaccinated in the city of Long Beach. Uh, we do know that, of course, most of K-5 have already received their first doses at Long Beach Unified. Uh, many are on their second dose. This week, we, we were vaccinating a lot of our middle school teachers um, and high school. And the next week, we were going to finish off a lot of our high school uh, teachers from Long Beach Unified. We've also done a lot of our independent schools. And so uh, the visit was really about the success of our, our, our schools, our success of the university and their progress. And so we're grateful to the governor and thank him again for coming back to Long Beach and hopefully we'll continue to, to do so. Want to start by giving, I'm going to come back to vaccines in a minute, but I want to start by giving up some, some data. Uh, we're now up to 856 residents uh, we have lost to COVID-19. That's important to note because uh, we are uh, reaching now a point where we are going to hit 900 and we're going to go beyond that, unfortunately. And as a reminder that it's still a serious pandemic, we're not going to uh, loosen our mask restrictions or, or start being irresponsible. We need to stay focused on being safe as we vaccinate more and more of the public. And I want to show you this first graph, which is uh, also great news. Our seven day positivity rate is at 3.2%. Uh, that's our lowest rate since October. Um, and um, our lowest during the pandemic was actually 2.8%, uh, which is before some of the surges that started. And so we are completely moving in the right direction on our positivity rate. Our daily average number of new cases has declined by 75% since the beginning of February from 231 cases down to 57. So all really great news, and that's thanks to all of you and people following the directions and, and doing the right thing. Now, we also continue to see a decrease in hospitalizations at our peak uh, back in January. Uh, we, have, of course, uh, were hospitalized with COVID-19. Uh, we had a, uh, I've had a huge decrease, about a 42% decrease from that, from that peak in January. Um, and we continue, of course, to know that it's, we still lose folks but the folks that are dying and the rate of folks um, is, is slowing down, and that's, that's also great news. Uh, we want to save as many lives as possible. Uh, this next graph uh, shows you the daily COVID-19 deaths. Um, and of course, every single one of these represents people and families. Um, but our daily average number for COVID-19 deaths has declined by about 84% since the height of the surge. So that's also really, uh, really encouraging news. Um, we want to still be aggressive on washing our hand, on wearing masks, on distancing when possible. Uh, but vaccinations um, are moving and certainly are helping us uh, get, the, uh, get the virus under control. I want to um, uh, note, uh, and, and, and I think Kelly Coffey will tell you this, I mean, we don't, you know, we don't have direct data yet that um, is saying uh, that vaccinations is what's causing the, the decline. It's not... Um, 
com we'll have that data hopefully shortly in the, in the weeks ahead, but I, I think there's a feeling that it's certainly making things better, and I think that's something that's really, uh, really important. Um, so let me talk a little bit about um, vaccine distribution. Uh, first, and, and the governor noted today that uh, Long Beach continues to kind of model uh, the state, we are at almost 66% of all eligible seniors in the city of Long Beach. In fact, we're at 65.8, so almost 66% of all eligible 65 and over seniors have received at least their first vaccine. That is a, a remarkable number. Um, it's uh, uh, outpacing um, uh, most health jurisdictions uh, are certainly around us here in, in the state of California. Uh, and it's, a, it's something to be very proud of. From day one, our priority has been this group has been seniors, has been folks 65 and over, and these numbers directly reflect uh, where uh, our efforts have been, have been in. Uh, we also know, if you look broadly, that um, uh, particularly if you, were, if, you, if you remove the people that are not eligible for a vaccine right now, so if you remove uh, folks essentially that are 16 and under, and you just look at the rest of the population, of those that are able to receive a vaccine in the city, a little over 20% um, have received the vaccine. That's the total number. Um, and then the, if you look at our, our daily uh, dashboard, that gives a lot more data about what the, the total population number is. Um, I, and I think that dashboard for today should be updated in the next uh, hour or two. Um, you'll, all the new numbers for today will be in the dashboard in a couple hours. Uh, to, to date, uh, we have the vaccinated about 114,000 doses. Uh, and, and about 74,000 of those have been first doses. Uh, in the city of Long Beach. And we've done, we know healthcare and long-term workers uh, and staff, we've done our seniors, our government emergency workers. But I wanna focus on, especially on food workers today. Uh, we are making incredible progress in vaccinating food and grocery workers. We have a super-sized food clinic on Friday, 3,000 restaurant uh, servers, cooks, uh, those that are delivering food, uh, people that work in bodegas, that work in markets. And we still have appointments available. We're hoping to fill, fill those up. Uh, we think, and our health uh, department director just mentioned to me that we could be um, finished with our food and grocery worker category over the course of this next, uh, this next week. Uh, we, might, we think we are already through a substantial number across the city. Uh, but we could be at a position in Long Beach where within the week uh, we will we'll, um, be a, 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 a mostly through the current tier uh, that we are in. Um, uh, of course, uh, not everyone in the city uh, is, wants to get a vaccine. I think everyone should, but some people don't. And now the work really begins of reaching people where they're at, because that number, particularly around seniors, that 65 plus um, number, uh, particularly around um, issues around equity and making sure that we're in neighborhoods, that's really the next phase. And so I want to. Uh, today really uh, mentioned that we're rolling out this the next phase of vaccinations and that is mobile vaccinations and deployment so this weekend we are beginning to roll out two new mobile vaccination units uh, these are large units much like we did do for vaccines that are going to homebound residents to senior buildings and to special locations across the city uh, each vehicle uh, has uh, comes equipped with vaccine supplies uh, tables and chairs, hand washing stations, and staff restrooms for, for, for the team as well. Uh, each team will be deployed uh, throughout the city um, beginning here this weekend. And our, the first two deployments that we have happening is one will we'll, we'll visit its, the first senior building that's receiving vaccines at the building. And then we'll continue to go from senior building to senior building to senior building all across the city. The second mobile uh, unit that we have is actually going to be hosting a special uh, clinic out in North Long Beach uh, so we can reach and ensure that we're reaching hard to reach communities. And so both of these clinics, uh, these mobile clinics, you're going to start seeing all across the city, but with a, a special focus on neighborhoods that are harder to reach, where folks might have a little bit more uh, trepidation about getting the vaccine uh, and, and where seniors are at so we can meet them. because. Um, uh, we have made great progress through uh, VaxLB, uh, and we are um, really blowing through all of the, um, uh, the, the appointments that people are asking for on that site. And so we encourage folks, 
to one, sign up on Vax B if they haven't, uh, if they're eligible, especially two, to check the state's my turn uh, system. They're scheduling people from Long Beach every day. Uh, and if you have questions, so please reach out to us um, at our uh, info line, which is 570-4636, or folks can email the city's COVID uh, vaccination um, email, which is uh, COVID-19 vaccine at uh, longbeach.gov. So that gives you a little bit of an update on where things are at with vaccinations. Um, so, so far, so good. And the, we, should, we should be receiving, again, the Johnson Johnson vaccine. We expect now we are, uh, we are days um, away next week. We should start getting those, those, those J&J vaccines, which is a single dose and a very effective vaccine. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn this over to Kelly Colopy, who will have some updates as well. Thank you, Mayor, and, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to follow up a little bit on the mobile clinics. So our intention is to be providing mobile clinics at least three days a week um, in, in terms of our pop up So we would be in different parts of the community at least three days a week uh, going forward, as well as on a daily basis for people who are homebound. So we are seeking to be able that people will be able to register um, and if they are homebound and need appointments brought to them, as well as to uh, senior buildings, we'll also be focusing on um, other communities, maybe you know, in terms of like homeless, uh, homeless shelters and others as, as the different uh, groups become eligible. So we're very excited about this opportunity and it all really, um, the, the mobiles we've been doing, right? So we've been doing pop-ups, um, but we'll be expanding that in a mo much more consistent mechanism uh, now that we have this new, uh, the mobile, uh, the mobile RVs, and then also uh, really being able to, to reach people who can't get to our testing sites. Um, and then I also wanted to share a little bit about just signing up for, for, um, for your appointment. So we have been utilizing VaxLB. We are continuing to utilize VaxLB for those who are eligible to be able to sign up so that we can draw from there so that you can get your uh, vaccine. But we also encourage everyone to focus and sign up on the on the my term through the state. Uh, so we encourage that because it opens up even more resources for people to be able to um, to get their vaccine. So you know, locally, especially if you are currently eligible, please sign up and continue to sign up in VaxLB. Um, but that we also encourage you to sign up uh, through the through the my term. Uh, there are also a number of other opportunities to sign up through CVS, Rite Aid, and Walgreens. And also all that information will be available on uh, the city's website. So the opportunities for vaccine continue to grow. So with that, I wanted to share a little bit about um, our new dashboard. There's been a lot of questions about, you know, what does vaccine look like in the city? And we wanted to share our new page. So uh, we, the state system for where we get our cases uh, has been down for the last, uh, for today. So the dashboard was not updated, given that all that information had not been updated due to the the state system being down, but it will be updated soon to include updated vaccine information. So if you look at the, if you look at our dashboard and, and you'll be able to see it, at the very top, you'll see the number of vaccine doses that are allocated to the city. So we've had 100, over 132,000 vaccines allocated to the city. That means it comes uh, to the health department um, or actually we, we learn each week of how much the allocation is and then we support by providing direct allocations to local hospitals, uh, pharmacies not in the state or the federal pharmacy program and other providers. And then we as the health department also uh, hold a lot of that vaccine uh, for our convention center and other areas. So those are the numbers that you see there. You'll see the number of first doses going out, the number of second doses going out, and then how much is being uh, utilized and ready for additional second doses. When you look, as the mayor mentioned, you know, we've had, um, We've done more than 114,000 um, doses of vaccine that have been administered uh, in the city overall when you, add the, when you add those numbers up. So then if you look at the, the next portion of the, um, of the dashboard, you sort of see the trend of how many we're doing each day. And in the purple is our first dose, uh, the, you know, and in the yellow are the second doses. So you can see that there was a very strong push in January and and uh, you know, uh, pretty much in January to really get first doses out. And then we sort of started to say, you know, in February, it's second dose February, uh, because at that time, the vaccine that we had available was only sufficient for second doses, but we started to receive more vaccine toward the end of February. So we were able to also do 
uh, first doses as well, and you can see how that spreads out. Um, it really does show you that over time, you know, that uh, the differences of our focus areas um, and knowing that we can, you know, do um, well over 3,000 at the convention center as well as in our other areas, there is more capacity uh, than we've re received vaccine for. It's very encouraging to think that by this time next week, um, we, we'll do an additional 18,000 people um, and that they'll be better protected from COVID. As this, this week, we had 18,000 um, first dose opportunities and that is what we've been providing through the convention center and our, and our pop-ups. So the remainder of the dashboard really focuses on our demographics and our equity sections. So what you'll see is that um, you'll see the, the map and the darker the section, uh, the, more, um, the more people have been vaccinated. And so uh, you'll see that um, over 16% as the mayor shared of Long Beach residents have been vaccinated as of yesterday. Um, and then also we, are, we, we take this number here, this 35,000 number, and there are approximately 54,000 uh, seniors in Long Beach. So that's how, that's how we track that is the 35,000 um, number divided by approximately 54,000. And that's how we know what our percentage is of older adults um, who have been vaccinated. And as the mayor mentioned, we also, you know, because uh, none of our vaccine are approved for under the age of 16, if we take a number and look at only for those for who the vaccine is approved, uh, we are over 20% of the population that's been vaccinated. If you dig into the vaccination data by zip code and race ethnicity, we, you know, we, we have shared that there are disparities in the vaccine and, it, and it's clear in our map uh, and it's clear in, in, our, in our race categories. Uh, the darker shades of the map shows the highest vaccine compared to the lighter shades. Uh, these differences stem in part based on who was first prioritized for a vaccine, which is our healthcare workers and older adults, but it also is heavily impacted by income, technology access, digital literacy, transportation, and vaccine hesitancy. So the city is committed to shifting this map and to ensure that those living in communities who have been most impacted by COVID and other long-term health, economic, educational, and racial disparities have easy access to the vaccine going forward. So if anybody, will, uh, if there are technology issues about the ability to sign up for vaccine, uh, we ask that people um, call our helpline at 562-570-4636 and then we can, uh, we will, if you have to leave a message, call you back and we'll work to uh, complete the form for you and make sure that you have that information. Uh, we also wanna emphasize, or let, we also wanna let you know that we, it used to be just through email that you got notification, but we are also starting to send out notifications through text message um, through Alert Long Beach. So we want, you know, so as we are providing opportunities, reminders and others, it will come to the two, two different ways so that people who may not have an email address or that technology will be able to get that access by telephone. We also wanna emphasize that vaccines are very safe. They've been highly effective at preventing illness and, um, and they're totally effective in, at preventing death. It's very true. This is also true of the new Johnson, um, otherwise known as Johnson & Johnson. So some people call it Johnson & Johnson, others when you hear it and you hear Johnson, uh, that is the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Uh, and we expect that to be, you know, as the mayor mentioned, in Long Beach within the, within the next couple of weeks. And so you'll be hearing more and more about that. Uh, with, for those who might feel hesitant due to issues regarding immigration status, please know that the information we collect is protected and only utilized for healthcare purposes. We are proactively working with our community partners to really be able to help people enroll uh, in vaccine, to support, outreach, educate, and it's really been a great partnership um, over, the, over the last, um, months around COVID, but in the last, uh, you know, the last month or so, when we've really worked on the mobile pop-ups for vaccine. So Long Beach and the city partners have held five dedicated clinics in West and Central Long Beach in the month of February to bring vaccinations directly into the most affected areas. Uh, we are planning additional opportunities in North Long Beach as well as continuing to work in West and Central Long Beach during the month of March, um, pulling from VaxLB subscribers and zip codes with high COVID uh, case rates um, as well as in areas where we're seeing our lowest vaccination rates. Uh, our equity uh, group continues to meet weekly and includes organizations across Long Beach. We follow their lead, so they bring to us what's working and not, and then we pull that information and really uh, work to remove barriers and to connect into what we're doing. And at the vaccine data page will be updated consistently uh, Monday through Friday, so every day you'll be able to see uh, updated data 
and then we uh, we provide additional information as possible. So with that, I'm going to turn it back to the mayor. Thank you. Thank you. If there's questions for Kelly or for me, we can do those. Uh, yes, thank you. We'll now take questions from the media. As a reminder, there is a uh, time for one question each. And uh, if you have additional media questions, you can send them to the Long Beach Joint Information Center. The first question comes from uh, Haley Mungia at the Press Telegram. Haley, uh, please let us know, uh, unmute yourself and let us know uh, to whom you're directing your question. Hi, uh, my question is for Kelly. Um, um, as Long Beach moves forward um, with vaccinating people in the current tiers, can you um, say how much longer it will be before the next uh, tier is eligible for vaccination in Long Beach? So currently there is not another tier that is uh, eligible per the state. So we're in that tier. And uh, we, are, we, are, um, we are providing vaccine for everyone who is currently in the, the phase 1B tier 1. Uh, per the state on March 15th, uh, people with specific underlying health conditions and specific physical disabilities that are uh, most impacted uh, by COVID will also be eligible. So we are working through the process. Um, you know, we'll be working with our providers and, and others to determine how we will, um, you know, have documentation of that or proof of what that is. And we'll start that process uh, as soon as the state allows there's also a conversation about the state opening some additional tiers, and when those are available to us, uh, we will certainly move in that direction. Thank you. Um, our next question is from Kelly Puente at Long Beach Post. Uh, Kelly, go ahead and unmute and let us know to whom uh, your question is directed. Yes, hi, this question is for Kelly Colopy. Uh, Kelly, this question is about variants. Um, LA County today reported a new uh, Brazilian variant, and it's reported about close to two dozen variants in LA County. Has Long Beach been testing for variants at all or seen any reports of these in, in the city? We have not seen any reports. So the, the variants that are identified for LA County would also include Long Beach um, in terms of the testing. They have, a, they have an extensive lab um, through the county to be able to do that variance testing. Uh, we have not found uh, the variants uh, currently in Long Beach. Okay, uh, this concludes questions and we will now move on to Spanish interpretation. Buenas tardes, gracias por acompañarnos en nuestro comunicado de prensa para hoy miércoles 3 de marzo del 2021. Hoy nos acompañó el alcalde García y también Kelly Colopy, la directora del Departamento de Salud y Servicios Humanos para la ciudad de Long Beach. Vamos a empezar con datos generales. A la fecha, 51,412 residentes de Long Beach han dado positivo por COVID-19 y hemos perdido 856 residentes de la ciudad debido a COVID-19. La primera imagen que se mostró enseñó los casos de positividad por fecha. Nuestra tasa de positividad de siete días es del 3.2% para hoy, que es la tasa más baja desde octubre. Nuestro nivel más bajo durante la pandemia fue del 2.8% antes de que comenzara uh, lo que vimos una subida drástica durante uh, noviembre y diciembre. Nuestro número promedio diario de casos uh, nuevos notificados ha disminuido un 75% desde principios de febrero, de 233 casos a 57 casos en la actualidad. También quiero mencionar que el alcalde García dio gracias al gobernador Newsom, quien vino a visitar el centro de convenciones y también la Universidad de Long Beach, um, quien tiene dos localidades para vacunación ahí en la no universidad, o una que es corrida por Kaiser y la otra ahí por la universidad. Uh, para la semana uh, que viene, eh, esperemos que todos los educadores aquí en la ciudad quien hayan querido tomar la vacuna, es, uh, van a estar vacunados. 
También seguimos viendo una disminución en hospitalizaciones. En nuestro PRICO, que fue el 13 de enero, 323 residentes de la ciudad fueron hospitalizados por COVID-19. Hoy el número es de 188, que es una disminución del 42%. La cantidad de personas que mueren por COVID-19 también ha disminuido. Hemos perdido a 307 personas por esta terrible enfermedad en el mes de enero, en el punto um, álgido del aumento. Estábamos viendo un promedio de 12 muertes por COVID-19 por día uh, en los residentes de Long Beach y los números fueron devastadores. Cada persona que ha muerto por COVID-19 está siendo llorada en este momento por las personas que los aman y una muerte es demasiado. Pero estamos viendo que los números están comenzando a disminuir. La segunda imagen mostrada enseña las muertes diarias por COVID-19. Nuestro número promedio diario de muertes por COVID-19 ha disminuido un 84% desde el apogeo del aumento. Ah, por eso es que ah, hemos sido tan agresivos al distribuir las vacunas a medida que llega la suministra. No eh, queremos que más personas mueran a causa de este virus. Nos alienta la caída de casos, hospitalizaciones y muertes, que es el resultado de nuestra tragedia, es esta, ah, estrategia que incluye orden de salud de la ciudad y mayor educación comunitaria. También adquirir a los protocolos um, de enmascaramiento, distanciamiento físico y prácticas de desinfección. Todavía es demasiado pronto para saber qué parte de la disminución de los casos se debe a esta vacuna, uh, especialmente porque el aumento fue impulsado por personas más jóvenes y muchas todavía no son elegibles para la vacuna. Long Beach continúa siendo el modelo del estado para la distribución de las vacunas y esa semana estamos lanzando dos nuevos vehículos móviles para administrar vacunas a los residentes confinados, a sus hogares y a las personas en los vecindarios con las tasas más altas de casos de coronavirus. Cada vehículo estará equipado con suministros de vacunas y unidades de almacenamiento, mesas y sillas, estaciones de lavado de manos y también tendrán baños para el personal para poder maximizar el tiempo del equipo en la comunidad. El equipo de vacunación móvil se desplegará en citas en el hogar y, citas y sitios de vida asistida. Las personas interesadas en solicitar una cita en el hogar pueden visitar el sitio de web de la ciudad para completar un formulario de solicitud o también pueden llamar al área 562-570-4633. Uh, también pueden visitar el sitio de web longbeach.gov barra oblicua COVID-19 y ahí verán um, lo que dice Dashboard, D-A-S-H-B-O-A-R-D. El personal del Departamento de Salud ex examinará las solicitudes, solicitudes y verificará la elegibilidad antes de programar una cita para usted. El equipo de vacunación móvil 2 ofrecerá vacunación emergentes en toda la ciudad y, y, y centros para personas de la tercera edad, así como también alcance a las personas sin hogar. Cada semana el equipo móvil llevará a cabo actividades de extensión comunitarias antes de la llegada de la clínica. La clínica emergente sobre ruedas tendrá capacidad para administrar 300 vacunas al día y esas 300 vacunas son parte de la suma de las 3,500 vacunas que hemos podido administrar todos los días esta semana en el centro de convenciones aquí de Long Beach. Como recordatorio, todos los residentes, incluso aquellos que han recibido la vacuna COVID-19, deben continuar cubriéndose la cara, mantener ese distanciamiento físico adecuado y también seguir um, todos los demás uh, protocolos de salud y seguridad. La semana pasada agregamos datos de vacunas a nuestro panel de datos interactivo COVID-19 
y vamos a hablar un poquito más para poder guiarlos a través de ese nuevo pan, um, panel que está disponible. De nuevo, les repito, la, el sitio de web en longbeach.gov chica barra oblicua COVID-19. C-O-V chica y D-1-9. En la parte superior um, de esa página verá la cantidad de dosis de vacunas asignadas a la ciudad. Esto incluye todas las dosis que se nos asignan um, como una, un, uh, un lugar para ofrecer servicios um, médicos. Luego asignamos algunas de las dosis a hospitales y proveedores de atención médica. Hasta la fecha se han administrado 114 mil dosis de vacuna en Long Beach ya sea por, por nosotros o por nuestros proveedores que um, hemos mencionado anteriormente, incluye los hospitales y otros centros. Esto también incluye 74 mil en las primeras dosis agregadas junto con 40,500 segundas dosis que tenemos ahora. Ahora um, vamos a hablar sobre el siguiente um, gráfico que mostraron, este, que muestra la primera y segunda dosis, también le uh, brinda una imagen de cómo ha sido asignada a lo largo del tiempo. Verá que no, no hemos recibido tanta vacuna de lo cual, cual estamos capaces de poder administrar. Hemos mencionado eso anteriormente, que la cantidad de vacunas que hemos podido dar es la cantidad que ha sido asignada. Mientras recibimos más, vamos a poder ofrecer más citas para la comunidad. Esta es la primera semana que realmente pudimos aumentar las operaciones en el sitio de vacunación masiva del Centro de Convenciones de Long Beach. Esta semana estamos administrando 3,500 inyecciones por día. Es muy alentador pensar que a estas alturas, la semana que entra, tendremos a 18,000 personas um, protegidas contra COVID-19 con esa vacuna. El resto del panel se centra en la demograf uh, demografía y la equidad. Estos datos son específicos de los residentes aquí de la ciudad de Long Beach, ya sea que las personas hayan sido vacunadas en Long Beach por un proveedor fuera de la ciudad o en un sitio de vacunación aquí del condado. Uh, en general, el 16% de nuestra población ha sido, um, ha tomado al menos una de las dos vacunas. Y también podemos um, informar que si removemos a las personas con 16, 16 o menor que no, no son elegibles para la vacuna, podemos decir que el 20% de nuestra um, población ya ha sido vacunada, que es muy buena uh, uh, noticia. La mayor proporción de personas que recibieron la vacuna tienen 65 años o más y casi el 66% de los adultos mayores que viven en Long Beach han recibido su primera vacuna. Los um, tonos más oscuros mostrados en esta, en esta página de web uh, muestran las tasas más altas de vacuna en comparación con los tonos más claros. Estas diferencias se de deriven en parte de que a quien se los dio prioridad en primer lugar para la vacuna, por ejemplo, las personas 65 y mayor, um, trabajadores de salud, adultos mayores, pero también los ingresos, el acceso a la tecnología y alfabetización digital y las dudas sobre la vacuna juegan um, algo bastante importante. La ciudad está comprometida a cambiar este mapa para asegurar que aquellos que viven en las comunidades, quienes han sido más afectadas por COVID y otras desparidades de salud económicas, educativas y raciales a lo largo plazo, tengan fácil acceso a la vacuna. Lo que queremos decir es que las, um, las áreas, códigos postales de la ciudad que tienen, han dado más vacunación, um, normalmente son aquellos con más altos ingresos. Entonces, queremos asegurar que las áreas de la ciudad que han, han sido más afectadas por este virus también sea um, uh, recibiendo la vacuna a, a mismo 
a porcentaje. Si necesita ayuda para completar el formulario de la vacuna, puede llamar a nuestra línea de ayuda al 562-570-4636. Si tiene que dejar un mensaje, por favor, hágalo, no se vaya a desanimar y le devolveremos la llamada. Queremos enfatizar que esas vacunas son seguras, son muy eficaces para prevenir enfermedades y totalmente eficaces para prevenir la muerte. Eso también es cierto para la nueva vacuna de Janssen, también conocida como Johnson Johnson, que esperamos ver en Long Beach en la pro, las próximas dos semanas. Esa es la vacuna que se administra en solamente una dosis comparada con las otras dos vacunas que se administran en dos diferentes dosis. Y aquellos que pueden tener dudas debido a problemas relacionados con su estado migratorio deben saber que la información que nosotros recopilamos está protegida y solo se utiliza para fines de atención médica. También estamos trabajando de manera proactiva con socios comunitarios para aumentar la accesibilidad a las vacunas. Long Beach y los socios de la ciudad han realizado cinco clínicas dedicadas en el oeste y el centro de Long Beach en el mes de febrero para llevar las vacunas directamente a las áreas más afectadas por COVID-19 para llegar directamente a los grupos que necesitan recursos de vacunas. Estamos planeando muchas más clínicas en el mes de marzo con un enfoque de las suscripciones de Vax LV en códigos postales con altas tasas de casos de COVID-19 y tasas de vacunación más bajas. Hemos mencionado Vax LV anteriormente, es um, el sitio donde usted puede entrar, poner su información y ellos lo van a notificar cuando usted es elegible para recibir esa vacuna. También tenemos un grupo de equidad de vacunas que se estableció hace meses y se reúne cada semana. Nos reunimos virtualmente con un grupo de organizaciones de Long Beach y seguimos su ejemplo cuando nos dicen qué es lo que más necesita en sus comunidades. La página de datos de la vacuna de actualizar, uh, se actualizará de manera, de manera coeger coherente con el resto del panel de datos de lunes a viernes o cuando haya nueva información disponibles. Lo que sí quiero mencionar es que la, la, um, el, el panel que acabo de mencionar que vaya a tener nuevos datos en este momento no está um, este, con los datos más recientes, ya que el sitio de web del estado ha estado bajo durante las últimas um, horas. Es la página de datos de la vacuna, como mencioné, también la vamos a actualizar. A actualizar. Muchas gracias por hacer su parte para proteger y proteger a los demás. Esto va a ser todo por hoy. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos. If you have joined during our Spanish translation, you can visit our Facebook page to hear the press briefing from the beginning with Mayor Garcia and the Director of Health and Human Services, Kelly Colopy. That is all for today. We thank you for joining us.